Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at Hooke's Law, or you might know it as extension of a spring when you're adding forces onto the bottom. This video was made possible by the fantastic tuition kit who have helped me to buy loads and loads of this equipment for you. For this experiment you're going to need a clamp stand set up with your spring attached on the end there and you're going to need a ruler so we can measure the length of the spring. If you have a second clamp you can clamp the ruler on there or you can just hold it. Now we're going to be measuring the length of the spring here so we're going to be measuring from the top of the spring to the bottom of the spring. So here that is measuring at 2.4 centimetres. It is really important to make sure you're measuring from the same point of the spring to the same point of the spring. Because while it's condensed, it doesn't make that much difference. There's not a lot of space between this spring and this spring, or the bottom spring. However, when there is weight on there, you'll notice there is a lot of difference between here and here. So make note of whether you're measuring from here or here, and this one is the best one to go from, from the very top of the spring. Once you've measured the length of the first part of the spring, you can attach your weight. You'll notice that your weight already is 100 grams with this bit on the bottom. Attach it gently, wait until the spring has stopped springing, give that a little bit of help, and then measure the length of the spring again. Each time now we can add on one more mass. And again, measure the length of the spring. Your table for this experiment might look a bit complicated because what we measure isn't actually what we plot on a graph. You're going to be measuring the mass that you add in grams and you're going to be measuring the length of the spring in centimetres. But what we actually plot on the graph is weight in newtons versus extension in metres. So we need to take our weight, our mass added, sorry, in grams, turn it into kilograms and then use an equation to turn that into weight. Take the length of the spring that we measured, turn that into the extension, then turn that into the extension in centimetres. So mass added and length of spring are what we're going to be measuring. And weight in newtons and extension in metres is what we're going to be plotting on a graph. You'll notice when I put my numbers in that they are all to the same resolution. These are all whole numbers to the nearest 100 and these all to go to one decimal place. Even the one that is 17.0, the zero in there is really, really important. When you have a ruler, you need to go to the resolution of that ruler or whatever you're measuring with. So on this one, you could measure to the nearest millimetre, so I'll have to record my results to the nearest millimetre to make it accurate. And I need to turn my mass added in grams into mass in kilograms, and we do that by dividing by 1,000. So I now have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 kilograms that were added. We then need to work out the weight using weight equals mass times gravity. So we need to take our mass, which we worked out in this column, times it by a value for gravity, which is 10 newtons per kilogram. Some examples will have the value of 9.81 newtons per kilogram. You just need to use whichever one your exam board says. So now we have our weight in newtons, we can look at our length of spring. When we measured the length of the spring, we measured from the top to the bottom. And then from the top to the bottom of the spring, making sure it's always measured from the same parts. But that doesn't tell us how much the spring has increased in length. So my finger, I tried to keep it in the same place. So this was the original length of the spring here. And this bit here is the extension. And the extension is what we're actually interested in. So to work out the extension, we need to take the length of the spring and minus the original length of the spring, which is 2.4. So now I've taken all of the numbers, minus 2.4, I have my extension. Now I need to divide that by 100 to get that into metres. 
Now, after all of that, we can finally plot our graph, plotting weight in newtons against extension in metres. Now we have our graph drawn, we have weight in newtons versus extension in metres, and we are ready to plot weight versus extension. So at 1 newton, it was 1.3, at 2 newtons, it was 2.9, at 3 newtons, 5.5, .5. At 4 newtons, 7.5. At 5 newtons, 1.0. 6 newtons, 1.2. 7 newtons, 1.46. 6. And at 8 newtons, 1.6. Right up there. That is a pretty nice looking graph, so we're just going to draw our line of best fit through there. Um, this one has to go through zero because at zero newtons, you had zero extension. From this graph, we can find the spring constant. We know that force is equal to the spring constant times extension. So if we draw a triangle, bigger triangle the better. And it's nice if we can use nice numbers for triangles because it's nice if we can use nice numbers. So going across here, you have to always draw your construction lines on graphs, otherwise examiners do not like it. To find our spring constant of force, it equals spring constant times extension. So force divided by extension is going to give us our spring constant. Force is this down here from there to there, so that is 6. Extension is 0 0.12. So for this spring, 6 divided by 1.2 is 50 newtons per metre.